Paul Miller had three sons. When he died, all that he left behind was a mill, a donkey, and a cat. Well, since I'm the oldest, said his first son, I'll take the mill. The second son quickly added, And I'm next. I'll take the donkey. They looked at their younger brother, Marquis. How lucky you are. You shall have the cat, the brothers said, and laughed out aloud. The poor fellow shook his head as his brothers left. It was not fair at all. My brothers can make a fine living with a mill and a donkey, but what about me? I'm stuck with Puss, said Marquis, wringing his hands in despair. Puss had been listening. He stretched and yawned loudly. <sighs> now, now, you won't have to worry when I'm around. All I need is a bag and a handsome pair of boots, and I'll be able to take care of us both. Sure you will, thought Marquis. But to be fair, he had seen Puss use many tricks to catch mice and rats. If nothing else, they wouldn't go hungry. Our father left us some property in his will. I can't help thinking that it's been divided unfairly. Do you remember what I got? My father has left me this cat. What am I supposed to do with it? You don't have to do anything with me. A talking cat? Did I really hear you speak, or am I dreaming? My dear master, please don't think that I'm useless. Just wait and see what I do, and you'll be happy that I belong to you. How can I be happy when I've only got a cat and nothing else? You will understand soon. But first, can you get me a pair of boots and a sack? Did you forget that I don't have any money? See if you can find a sack here. We'll get the cobbler to make you a pair of boots. No, this is not a sack. Let's look somewhere else. This is not a sack either. How about looking near that? No, this doesn't look like a sack. No, this is not a sack. Let's look somewhere else. This is not a sack either. How about looking near that log? No, this doesn't look like a sack. No, this is not a sack. Let's look somewhere else. This is not a sack either. How about looking near that log? No, this doesn't look like a sack. No, this is not a sack. Let's look somewhere else. Soon, the cat was given his own pair of boots and the new bag that he had asked for. The boots fitted him perfectly, and he looked very smart. Puss packed a juicy cabbage and some bran in the bag and slung it around his neck. He polished his whiskers and set out. Puss headed straight to a spot where there were plenty of rabbits. He had a great plan in mind. Puss opened the bag wide and hid behind a tree. Soon a rabbit came hopping by. He saw the cabbage and leapt straight into the bag. Whoosh! As quick as the wind, Puss grabbed the bag and tied it closed with a piece of string. With the rabbit in his bag, Puss walked straight over to the king's palace. He bowed low and presented him with the rabbit. <clears throat> Your Majesty, said Puss in Boots in a royal voice. This humble gift comes from my master, Lord Marquis of Carabas. This was a fancy name that Puss had chosen for his master. What a thoughtful gift, said the king, who loved roasted rabbit. The next time, Puss managed to catch a brace of partridges, 
and took them once again to the king. This is wonderful. Tell your master I'm very pleased, said the king, who loved partridge stew even more. This went on for two months. Puss was becoming an expert at catching game, and the king was getting plumper. First, I need a bait for the rabbit. What do you think rabbits love to eat? This is exactly what we need. No rabbit can resist the smell of a fresh cabbage. Get ready. When the rabbit comes closer, catch it. Take this rabbit to the castle and offer it to the king.